How about with Verdum? You'd mentioned that he would be next. He's going to fight. I mean, uh, you, you know, we saw what happens with guys like Rashad and other people. When you sit around and wait, you know, who knows what's going to happen? Kane could get hurt again, and then what? Now you've been out two years or however long he'll be out. It just makes no sense. And have you spoken with him about it, or is this yeah, the we, first you had mentioned we it? I with him a couple weeks ago, and, uh, you know, so I think he understood where we were on that thing that we wanted to do, if I, we wanted him to fight. You were so fired up, like, with Silva and Mark fight. You have, like, t-shirts and booties. What did you think about, like, his drip fest? It bummed me out. You know, I was bummed out, and uh, I love that fight so much. Love that fight. I can't remember. Tell me the last time you saw two heavyweights go at it back and forth like that ever. And, I mean, it's been oh, cool, man. It's been a long time. So, I was bummed out. These end of year fight cards are always so stacked. I mean, you look at the prelims and any of those fights could belong on the main card of any other pay-per-view. Is there a lot of extra time toward the end of the year that you, where you have to sit down and look and, and make tough decisions about what goes on that main card? Um, yeah, well, I, we always want to build a card that, that you know, we always want to build a card that people are excited to see. And, uh, you know, we got a lot of guys injured the first half of this year, but we're, we're getting it together. Th there's a lot of positive things happening already this year. Hopefully I'll announce a lot of stuff on Saturday, trying to get it together so that we can. Um, you know, I say this, I mean, I'm sitting in this chair saying this to you guys every year at the end of every year. Every year we take it to another level. I personally think 2013 was the best year of fights we've ever had in the history of the company. Uh, it, it was unbelievable, and we've got a lot of cool things coming up this next year going right into 14 that hopefully I can announce on Saturday. And speaking of those uh, uh, prelims, you know, Uriah Hall had a lot of hype going into the Ultimate Fighter, yeah. and then afterwards, you know, you had some questions about his mentality as a fighter. Is there a better uh, status check for that than fighting Chris, Chris Lieben. Lieben. No, I think it's a great fight for him, and I think it's a great fight for Lieben. Um, yeah, we'll find out. We'll see on set. You know, I got some texts from Uriah saying, I'm glad you said all that stuff about me because it motivated me, and, you know, so we'll see on Saturday. He's a great kid, I hope. It's, it's funny because it's two of the guys that I like a lot, you know, facing each other. Did you kind of do that on purpose? Because I noticed that, that you were bringing up Uriah Hall's name without anybody even bringing it up for you. Were you oh, doing yeah, no, that? I was purposely, I was purposely sticking it to him. No doubt about it. I mean, if he comes out and just beats Chris, but looks kind of like hesitant, I mean, what do you say to him? What do you do with him? I don't know. I got to see the fight. I got to see how he fights and what happens, you know? If he, uh, he's just been so passive in his fights, you know? How about for Lieben? I mean, obviously, this is kind of a career evaluating type uh, fight. I, mean, I know he's one of your favorites, but. Lieben's one of those guys who's, who's you know, again, Guys like Anderson Silva and Josh Barnett, and you don't see guys like this that can stay at that level as they continue to get older and older. Um, you know, and Chris Lieben might be at that point where he's, you know, lining up his career. When Chris Lieben has his head right and everything, his life outside the octagon is great. He had a school, he was doing great things, he's been with this girl for a long time, who cares about, I mean, everything in his life can be great as long as he stays the right path. So, you know, Chris Lieben's had a great run He's a guy, you know, imagine season one of The Ultimate Fighter without Chris Lieben, you know. Um, Chris Lieben was the guy, you know, when we look back at it now, you don't think about it this way, but when Anderson Silva first came into the UFC, he fought Chris Lieben. That was his first fight. And, you know, now when you look back at it, it's like, oh, he fought Chris Lieben. Chris Lieben was undefeated in the UFC at the time, had a chin of granite, nobody could knock him out. And what Anderson Silva did to him, and Chris Lieben was 100% confident that he was going to beat Anderson Silva that night. And uh, it, it's funny that we talk about him and they're on this card together, but, you know, Chris Lieben's had a great run one way or another, um, and he's a guy that I will always uh, always respect and be there for in some way, shape, or form. Both, both of these fights can easily headline any card. Do you want to, what makes the decision to put them together? It's the end of the year, and it, and it lined up, and it just it made sense. It seems like, uh, you know, in, in a lot of people's minds, fair or not fair, that Chris Liebman is going to have to beat Anderson Silva twice to get full credit for it once. Do you think that's more Chris of a... Weidman. Chris Weidman. I'm sorry, I think Chris Weidman. I did, yeah. Chris Weidman. Do you think that's more of a testament? Do you think it's Weidman being shortchanged, or do you think that's more of a testament to the legend of Anderson Silva? You want to hear something crazy? So I was in New Jersey, me and Lorenzo, and, and uh, Chris Weidman came up to us and said, I want this fight, I'm ready for this fight. He said, I'm going to beat him, 
in the first fight, and then I will give you an immediate rematch because people won't believe it after I do it. Verbatim what he said to us. And that's what he did. You know? It's crazy. Do, do you think that that's fair to him? Do you think he's been shortchanged, that he hasn't been given no. the credit? When you knock out the greatest fighter of all time and the way that it went down, yeah, that's going to be that way. He's the underdog here, too, in yeah. Vegas. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and, and I think it's justified because look at my, it's funny because I look on the, on the uh, you know, like even the rankings. Anderson Silva's number three on the pound for pound list, you know, and all the stuff that happens. Guy's been on the biggest streak ever. He's the greatest ever. And then you lose one fight. And, and that's the way, you know, the way people uh, deal with you. What do you see with Misha uh, in her, her position? It's, it's almost like when you talk to people, she's the lamb being led to slaughter in this fight. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Um, I, I think it's, you know, that's a testament to what people think of Ronda. You know, Ronda is, is such a beast. But Misha, forget, even even in, in her losses, man, I mean, she's, she's, she goes to war. I mean, she can take some shots. She can, uh, she can uh, get into the exchanges. She's great on her feet. She's great on the ground. Even in her last fight with Ronda, she got out of Ronda's armbar. You know, then when Ronda got on her second one, she started cranking it. You know, um, but but Misha's tough and Misha's Misha's a live dog. Yeah, Not a some... lamb, a live dog. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, there's nothing yet. No. There's still a few contracts for us that we're working on. Do you have a ticket sale update for this card? Yeah, we're we're so sold out on this fight, it's insane. There's some singles left out there. I think we're at six point three million right now. Yeah. When you talk about the women's division, uh, Kat Zangano, have you heard much about her recovery process and when is she expected back? Yeah, she's, uh, she's doing good and hopefully she stays healthy and uh, we can get her back by summer. Would she be an immediate contender right away? Or? She's the number one, yeah. She's numero uno. When she's healthy, she'll, she'll be ready to go. Also in that division, Sarah McMahon, what's the latest with her? She'll be back soon, too, right after the first of the year. You were talking about being bummed earlier. That was in reference to the TRT thing, correct? Yeah. Does that change your mindset at all? That's twice now you guys have approved. Or what you guys didn't approve when you approved uh, Silva's. The Milwaukee Commission approved. So I told you, we test the shit out of these guys that are doing TRT. We gave him his last test, right, the week of the fight. He was perfect. He took another shot. Just put him over. So it's nothing about the process. It was a personal mistake. Yeah, and, and what does that extra shot really do for you? What did it really do for you the week of the fight? It destroyed everything. You didn't. Now you don't get the win money that we were given. We were giving both guys show and win money, and you won the bonus. Now you lost both your win money and your bonus money. Ouch. So all of you guys out there that are on TRT, and it's legal, you want to fuck around and take that shot after you've been tested, there's the consequences. The consequences could not be worse. Now you're now you're on suspension for a year. You lost your 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 win and your bonus money, and I'm sure your sponsors aren't thrilled either. Well, you had a situation with Rothwell too, and he says that he felt he did it all correctly under the commission, and somehow it happened. I mean, I do you get to a point where you're like, man, you know, are you, you know you, what's going on? Do what? you, Ridiculous. Are you getting any indication from fighters that are on that exemption that whether or not they think it's any help to them at all, that maybe all of this is not yeah, worth it? But here's what it does. Where it really helps you is during your training. Right. While you're training, it helps you heal faster and all this other stuff. Taking that extra shot the week of the fight just puts your levels up through the roof and doesn't doesn't really give you any extra, you know. If he didn't take that shot, they would have the same fight probably. Do, do you, it's just not worth the risk. Why risk it? Now right. you see the consequences. So, and do, you, so, do you think that the, the fighters are coming around with that idea, though, that maybe this just isn't worth it? If you have a quarter of a brain, it should. So when you your... tested him, was he low? Because he was talking no. about him being low. No. He was so based good. on your feelings on it, is there any kind of inkling to say, all right, just ban it then, just get rid of it completely? The, the, even with the situations that have come up, you still don't We're lean, lean towards do that? we what the Athletic Commission does. We're always going to go with the Athletic Commission. Listen, do you think it does? Do you think it's great for me that this guy? I, I literally, I told you guys how much I love that fight and how into that fight I was, and it's just like now it ruins it for me. You know, I talked to Mark Hunt. And Mark Hunt's like, let me, let me tell you what, brother. 
I don't care what he was on or what he did. Two guys went in there and did their thing, and you know, he, he actually defended him and was like, that dude went toe to toe with me, and we put on something that you know was it was pretty cool. You know, actually, Mark Hunt got me in a better mood about it. You know, but still, it you're not legally, sporting the shirt again. The way you, you know, legally, you know, yeah. what are you gonna do? So rumor has it that Brock Lesnar is coming for a 168. Is he coming for the fight or is he coming to talk business? Really? I don't know. I honestly don't know. Honestly. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> we good? All right, you guys. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, man.